Today we're launching our sustainability roadmap that we will implement from now until to 2020, but we also will achieve the first milestones in 2015. There are 11 goals in our sustainability roadmap. As you can see, <clears throat> they are very wide. They cover fiber sourcing, emissions, reforestation, climate change, human rights, and also there are key, six key areas of focus. We group it into social, economic, and human rights, biodiversity and habitat protection in our operations and also outside our operations, carbon emission and sequestration, production environmental impact, and certification. But you see the green circle right in the middle. That is the core element of our sustainability roadmap, which is responsible sourcing. We have built our responsible sourcing over the years. We, re we greatly res uh, restructured our re responsible sourcing in 2003, 2004, and now we have arrived at the next stage. We have, it, we have to evolve our uh, responsible procurement uh, policies and guidelines. This is the structure our, of our sustainability pol policies that we have established since 2004. To date, we have four policies under our sustainability declaration. Right now, as one of the core elements and moving forward, we need to evolve our procurement and processing policy that will drive the main elements in our sustainability roadmap. Supporting the statement by Hadidar before the Secretary General, we totally agree. Wood legality is a must. Wood legality is the foundation of our supply chain. We fully support SVLK, or uh, legality uh, traceability system which has been developed by the, our government and multi-stakeholders. And we are proudly announced today that three of our production facilities have passed SVLK audit. By January 2013, all our production facilities will be fully compliant with SVLK. We are not just an Indonesian company. We are also a global company. We need to understand and also accept um, input from stakeholders, from our stakeholders globally. Therefore, today we're launching our procurement guidelines, which will be the backbone of a lot of our initiatives in Sustainable Roadmap. Number one, of course, legality has to be properly checked. Number two, as per our commitment on May 15, we have to respect and does not violate traditional and human rights. We are going to adopt the best practice according to FPIC or free and prior informed consent. And as per our um, announcement on May 15, we also started to implement high conservation value forest as defined by HCV network in our plantation operation as well. Regarding waste and wood residues, we have allocated 5% maximum to support in our supply chain to support the government development. Should the government uh, develop land in, 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 in the areas classified as APL or area for other land use, we will support the government by uh, processing the waste residues as the most environmentally and responsibly way. We also make sure that the wood that we procure will not be uh, coming from trees or tree plantation that has been genetically modified. A GMO is, is, is very sensitive to some stakeholders, and a lot of governments globally are very sensitive about that as well. So we have to implement a precautionary approach in implementing GMO as well. So we will not accept GMO modified trees unless it has been assessed by the highest international standard. Uh, we have, um, uh, together with our partners, we have assessed the, our supply chains. And starting March 2012, we have started the preliminary high conservation value forest assessment in APP con uh, APP's concessions. The preliminary assessment result has been reported to us internally, and we're going to go ahead with the full assessment, full air high conservation value forest assessment for the rest of the concessions. As you can see, um, under full HCVF assessment, we put their HCV management plan. Because a lot of people ask me, what are you doing with high conservation value forest assessment? What is your objective? APP objective in high conservation value forest assessment is clear. We need to make sure we identify and protect HCV or high conservation values found in our concessions. But then what? 
The most challenging part is to come up with an HCV management, management plan so the high conservation values found in our concessions, no matter what little, will be identified, protected, maintained, and enhanced. This is our sustainability roadmap in terms of responsible sourcing. We're going to implement a phased approach to 100 compliance. By 2012, uh, it is SCVF assessment compliance for APP concessions. By second quarter 2013, we target 50% HCVF assessment compliance for our independent suppliers. And by second quarter 2014, we target 75% HCVF assessment compliance for our independent suppliers. And by 2015, we expect that there are no high conservation value fibers enter our supply chain anymore. And to support the government in accepting the wood residues and, and waste materials uh, from, the, from the development, we are also in, um, going to impose additional screenings uh, in, in the wood intake by, uh, by making sure that the wood we receive is in full compliance with the critical, critical uh, or endangered species according to IUCN and CITES, uh, CITES Appendix 1. It is our, also our intention to make sure that the mandatory Sustainable Forest Management Certification, PHPL, will be completed by 2014. And also to make sure that independent legal verification for our uh, wood supply will also be completed. We target that by 2020, all our um, wood suppliers will achieve voluntary Sustainable Forest Management Standard. Right now, that we can implement is LEI, or Ecolabel uh, Institute of Indonesia. But hopefully one day, once FSC and BEFC and other certification schemes enter Indonesia and can be implemented in Indonesia, then we will be able to obtain those certifications as well. Just want to update you from our last announcement on May 15. On May 15, we declare that by June 1st, we will suspend all natural forest clearance in our lockover forest areas in APP's concessions. This is just a few examples of the pictures we has been, we has been taken in the field. As you can see that uh, heavy equipment uh, to develop plantation in, in lockover natural forest area has been relocated to plantation activities. This is the uh, uh, pictures of a lot of our contractors being relocated to plantation area. As you can see there are contractor camps, um, antenna, TV, and everything else being moved into a plantation area to make sure that the natural forest left in our concessions will be subject to HCVF without any interference from other activity activities. I just want to uh, remind you about high conservation value forest uh, principles. As you can see, there are six principles over here. Uh, the reason why I want to remind you about this is because a lot of input that I receive, that we receive from our stakeholders, that uh, what about what about natural forest protection? How much natural forest will be protected from HCVF assessment? This is just a, a small reminder that HCVF is beyond natural forest protection. HCVF is about sustainability management of high conservation values that can be found in wasteland, shrubs, and in, in degraded area, even in our plantations. It's just, a, a, again, a reminder of what we, res what we announced on May 15 about high conservation value forest and the implementation in our concessions and also our independent suppliers. Next is the, um, uh, the policy that we declare on May 15, it is beyond HCVF commitment. As you can see here, we also, that we are going to lead a scientific research on high carbon stock, and also the implementation of the best practice of free and prior informed consent to improve our practice in, and community engagement. Uh, what is the feedback after we announce our uh, policy on May 15? Made us realize that APP is a global company. When we make an announcement somewhere in Jakarta, the rest of the world reacted. Of course, there are also criticisms that we receive after we made an, our announcement on May 15. Some people ask, what is the difference between APP's new commitment on HCPF and your previous commitment to HCPF? As Pak Hadidar mentioned before, the government of Indonesia has a very good system 
in the um, uh, identification and protection of high conservation value forests to develop mosaic plantation. In the, that, it's, it, that is uh, contained in their macro and micro delineation assessment, which is also an, an independent assessment uh, accredited by the government of Indonesia. So we did commit that, we'll go, that we are going to be fully compliant with HCVF as, uh, uh, as outlined by the government protocol. But today, we make announcement based on the HCVF as defined by HCV Resource Network. And some, some people ask, but you did make this commitment before in 2004. Yes, we tried, uh, we, we conducted a pilot project in 2004 in, in, in trying in, to implement HCV toolkit at that time. The HCVF, uh, HCV toolkit revised version for Indonesia in 2008 was not made. It was the, the toolkit that we used was HCV toolkit uh, two, uh, 2003, which was drafted by ProForest. And we tried that on several pilot projects in our area. But at the same time, the government of Indonesia also launched their own um, uh, macro and micro delineation system to identify and protect HCVF. If you have to manage over 1 million hectares, you need to have one rule, one principle at a time to be implemented because it is very difficult to make sure that this, the same rule is applied over all supply chain. If you have two people guiding the ship, it will not work. So we need to make sure that we adopted one principle, clear principle at a time in the protection of ATVF. Second question. There is not much natural forest in APP's concession. What are you, why are you doing ATVF? The definition of ACV goes beyond just natural forest. Out of the six ATVs, two of them can be found in shrubs on wasteland. And out of the six HCVs, two of them can be found on community areas. It is our objective, as I said earlier, to, that we adopt now, since we have the technical knowledge and the know-how and the right partners to do so, to identify this HCV in our uh, undeveloped land, uh, which is about, about half of the total uh, concession area including the set-aside areas, including our plantation, to identify any HCV that can be found there. And once we find it, we have to maintain and enhance it. What about peatland and HCS protection? Our goal is to protect critical peatland in accordance with the principle of sustainable peatland management of the laws and regulations of Indonesia. It is our goal. Uh, it is because it is a fact that public plantations in Indonesia has been designate, designated in areas that, ca that contain many peatland, such as in Sumatra, in Riau, and Jambi. So we are committed to protect the critical peatland as defined by the government, with the pit depth uh, more than three meter located upstream and the river. But we, uh, today we have adopted a new HCVF principle, where uh, principle point two and point four actually addressing a peat issue, such as the hydrology system of the, of the landscape. And regarding high carbon stock, it's a new term. It's a new term and not a lot of people know about. What is high carbon stock? High carbon stock was, uh, was first found in the national strategy RADD Plus issued by Barbanas. It's a draft document issued by Barbanas. And it under the, um, the agriculture, um, agriculture sector development section, in the strengthening program section, we found that the um, uh, high carbon stock was mentioned to be implemented in agriculture um, practice and uh, to make sure that uh, their activities do not damage uh, possible biodiversity. But in the same document under sustainable forest management, that high carbon stock values cannot be found because there's no definition of high carbon stock carbon stock values that has been defined to be implemented for a public plantation industry. That's why APP pledged that we commit to lead a research to define a, a, a value that it can be implemented to public plantation industry on high carbon stock. So last question, uh, why do you not implement HCVF across all your supply chain immediately? Uh, as we said before, if you want to improve ourselves, we have to start with ourselves. This is why we start with our own concession, one over in over one million hectares of of, of um, pulpwood concessions. Given their independent state status, 
status, it will take some time for our independent suppliers to adopt this uh, principle. Because it's not just a matter about adopting this principle, it's about education, it's about making sure that, that, that they are secure in adopting SEVF, that they're not worried about the, the impact, the negative impacts on their production activities, the negative impacts on the jobs and everything else. So it's, it's, it's a long, challenging journey that we are asking everybody here and also anybody uh, other other stakeholders who are who are concerned and interested to help us to be together with us with us hand in hand in try to implement this HCVF principle in our independent suppliers. We target that by end of 2014, all our independent suppliers will be in compliance with HCVF assessment. Should there should anybody refuse, then we will have no other options but to review our contract agreement with our suppliers. Uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen.